two boxers, as Frank Buff told you, already in the ring. So right over to our MC for the night, Nat Bassett. Gentlemen, please. Mr. Chairman, my lords, gentlemen, the Anglo-American Sporting Club proudly presents the main event of the evening, a 10-round international bantamweight contest of three minutes each round and a match made at eight stone at nine pounds between the bantamweight champion of the Philippines, Billy Brown, And in this corner, the British and Empire bantamweight champion from Liverpool, Alan Rudkin. <laughs> at the weigh-in at one o'clock this afternoon, Brown scaled eight stone seven and a half pounds. Rudkin scaled eight stone eight and a half pounds. Your officials appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. Your referee, the former British Empire and European welterweight champion from Liverpool, Mr. Wally Tom. Your timekeeper, Mr. John Burns of Southport. And your steward in charge, Mr. Fred Bakeborough of Bradford. Thank you. So there are the official announcements. On the left, Alan Rutkin, the British and Empire Bantamweight champion, having his first fight since May the 13th this year when he regained his titles from Walter McGowan of Bellevue, Manchester. So his first fight for three months in here tonight against the man on the right-hand side in the right-hand corner, Billy Brown, the Philippines one, champion. One. Ten rounds, round one. And Billy Brown, this man, uh, much of an unknown quantity. He's had quite a number of bouts. He's had over 60 bouts and lost only 16 and a man who travels around the world fighting the way he goes. His first appearance here in this country tonight against Alan Rutkin. Rutkin, of course, the man who last year delivered the punch that was called the greatest punch of the year. It was a right to the jaw in right. June when he knocked out Jerry Jones in the first round. <coughs> Tremendous punch, which you probably saw on BBC television, and everybody waiting tonight to see whether Rutkin, the boxer, can produce that sort of punch once again here tonight against Billy Brown. <coughs> Little slight crash of heads there early in this first round. Right. It's of course a very important fight for Alan Redkin because the world champion Lionel Rose of Australia has already said that he'll almost certainly defend his title in December this year, and Redkin is a man who wants to be in that ring with him. Billy Brown's got a reputation as a stare. He's never been knocked out, and he's never been put off his feet. He's been stopped a couple of times with cut eyes. He's got quite a bit of scar tissue around the top of his eyes, but he's never been put off his feet and never knocked out. Quite a stare. 60 fights, lost on his 16. about half a minute to the end of the first. Oh, oh. Two blows up from Redkin, hitting away at Brown's head. Any second of the bell. Right. There it is, the end of the first. So, Alan Rudkin, the 
26-year-old British and Empire bantamweight champion who comes from the tough Dingle district of Liverpool. 37 professional fights, won 33 and lost four. In fact, of those four defeats, three of them have been champions. In 65 in Tokyo, of course, he lost to Fighting Arada for the world bantamweight title. 66, he lost to McGowan, who was then world flyweight champion. In April, last year in Barcelona, lost to Ben Ali, the European champion. His only other defeat was in the second fight of his career, which was in June 63, and he was retired in the fourth due to an injury against Carl Taylor in London. Apart from that, against Carl Taylor, Rudkin never stopped, never knocked out, and only four defeats, three of them to champions. Billy Brown, his opponent tonight, in the other corner from the Philippines, is a man who Rudkin is really going to have to watch out for because Brown is no mean performer. There's Billy Brown in there with Al Phillips, the Arago Tigers. They come out for the start of the second. So Billy Brown of the Philippines, 27 years old, against Alan Rudkin, 26 years old. Rutkin holding that right hand high, it's cocked and it's looking for that opening against Brown, who's a, a tough, wiry looking man, a typical little Filipino. Just about an inch shorter than Rutkin. Those punches got in, they both hurt, a left and a right hand and another swinging right hand to Brown's head. Alan Rudkin's first fight since May the 13th this year when he regained his titles at Bellevue Manchester. Again, that right hand just glancing off the front of Billy Brown's face. Wild swing, and Rudkin catches him nicely. Brown swinging as he comes in. He was way off target, and Rudkin saw his mark, caught him quickly with the left and right hand. In the second round, the scheduled 10 round, live at the Anglo American Sporting Club in Manchester. for Billy Brown, the Philippines champion. This is the man who's twice more met the man who's now the world champion, Lionel Rose. He met him in October 1965 in Melbourne, and he lost when the referee stopped it in 10 rounds. And a month later, in the return bout, also in Melbourne, Billy Brown of the Philippines met Lionel Rose again. This time he took in the distance, but Rose won on points over the 12 rounds. And his last fight, June the 27th this year in Italy, and he lost on points again over 10 to Salvatore Baruni, the European champion and the former world flyweight champion. So Brown, the man who's been traveling around the world, he's fought in Bangkok and Japan and in Manila, of course, his hometown. And he's met the best in the world. Only 16 defeats and 60 contests. And tonight having quite a fight on his hands here against Alan Rudkin. Rudkin there in the left-hand corner with, of course, his manager Bobby Neal as we come up for the third. Brown Freeland, Alan Redkin in the dark shorts. Billy Brown, the Philippines champion.
Billy Brown looking slightly older than his official record of 27 years old, but a man who's seen a lot of those 27 years in the boxing ring. He started boxing nine years ago. It's getting through Brown's guard. And Brown inclined to drop his head as he comes in. He dropped it there rather dangerously. Referee Wally Tong, the former British champion, a welterweight champion, as Redkin hammers away at Brown on the ropes. Brown very happy to cover up a one punch from the Redkin there, just on the line. That's the one that caught Ron Jones, the American. That was a good right hand. That was a good one. As he came in, he caught him in Brown's head, really moved around on his shoulders that time. Well, this is the man who's never been put on the floor and never stopped, but if he takes a few more of those, that record could well be in danger here tonight. here around the ring. They just had a good dinner and now they're seeing a very good Alan Rutkin. Just under a minute left in the third round. start in this contest after three rounds. His contrast in style is already evident. Redkin standing up and waiting for Brown. Brown inclined to come in with his head rather down and talking there to manager Bobby Neal. He was on the other fight this year after that match with McGowan when he regained his titles. was at Nottingham when he had a 10-round points victory over Thailander Ponchai Papegra. Last year finished off a really great three-fight campaign with that really great knockout, the right to the jaw. He put away the American Ron Jones in the second round. Only Redkin's third knockout of his career. His first two knockouts way early in his career. So Redkin, a man who didn't really have a knockout punch, but really showed it there against Ron Jones last year. The punch of the year. Can he deliver it tonight against Billy Brown of the Philippines? Second That's the down. question everybody's asking as we come out for round four. four. He's been scoring away beautifully in this round with a straight left and suddenly decided to bring one in around the corner. 
and right hand cocked all the time. Well, for two little men, eight stone seven and a half Brian, eight stone eight and a half Alan Rintkin. There's a lot of heavy punching, heavy leather being thrown in this sporting club ring here at Manchester. Brown has already shown that he can take quite a lot of punishment. His record showed it, never stopped, never even knocked off his feet. And tonight here so far against Rudkin, he seems pretty content to take the stuff that Rudkin's throwing at him. His face, an absolute poker face, a mask that's showing anything at all. And Redkin is cut. Redkin is cut. Redkin cut on the left eye. Coming up towards the end of this fourth, and Redkin cut. cut on that left eye. And as quickly in the corner, it doesn't look at all nice. It looks a nasty cut. There's an awful lot of blood. It's spread it out with about 20 seconds to go at the end of that fourth round. His seconds working on it now, putting the ice bag on. It looks to be. Just above, it is above the eye, it's above the left eye, and this really would be a tragedy for Alan Rutkin, the British and Emperor Bantamweight champion. If it had to be Sir Wally Tong going over now to have a look at it, it's a lot of blood coming from the top of that eye, just on the left eye. Just at the end of round four, and this... Wally Tong now, he had a look, and he's gone back into his neutral corner, giving the seconds time to work on it. This really would be a tragedy, what was developing into a very good bud indeed. Hard punching by both men. And suddenly as they came out of that clinch with about 20 seconds to go in the fourth, Rutkin's eyes spurted blood. He's coming out for the fifth. And immediately after Brown swings a clubbing right hand. It's certainly a cut about a quarter of an inch long over the top of the left eye. Brown told me before he came in the ring tonight with Rutkin that this was one man he really had to beat because although Rutkin wants Lionel Rose for the world title, so does Billy Brown. He's met him twice before, taken the distance and lost on points over 10. Now he wants him for the world title. If he does well against Rutkin here tonight, Brown will probably get about in London in about a couple of months' time. Bleeding again now. And he's got a slight graze just under the eye as well. And the blood really coming down Redkin's face now as he goes into that clinch, rests his head on Brown's shoulder, but the blood really streaming down his face. through this fifth round. Redkin wiping the blood away from it, it's running into his eye now and causing him trouble. And he's going to have to produce that big Ron Jones special punch before Ray Long because that eye is definitely going to get worse. It's opened up again in this round. He's swinging right hand from Brown as he came in. It rocked Rutkin back, and the right hand caught the eye.
Half a minute to go in the first. Now, this little man from the Philippines, knowing that across in the other corner is Alan Rudkin with an eye badly cut. And there's Rudkin uh, working on that eye, trying to stop that flow of blood. It didn't open too badly in that fifth round. Uh, Brown caught it once with a swinging, glancing right-hander, which didn't do a lot of good at all just towards the end of the round. But Rudkin knew that he had to keep away from him. Brown quite content to bore in and get his head inside there. And Rudkin knew they had to keep away. That left hand, which had been scoring points in the opening part of the fight, plugged in. And Redkin came out for that fifth, looking like he'd been told, quite obviously, to get on with the job and try and put this man away. But of course, he's got a difficult chance because this is the man who's never been put away. He's never been stopped. He's never been knocked off his feet. So that's the problem Alan Redkin faces now. An eye badly cut, the left eye badly cut, facing Billy Brown of the Philippines, who's never been knocked off his feet. An intriguing problem. Second out. Round six. So the sixth round, the scheduled ten-rounder here at the Anglo-American Sporting Club Manchester. Alan Rudkin with a cut eye against Billy Brown. And again, that head comes in. Molly Tom obviously decided it's not a legal use of the head at this stage because he hasn't spoken to Brown. just as he came in off the back of the ropes and Redkin opening up now in this sixth round he's trying to find that opening for the right hand that he now knows he's got before that fight last year he believed he hadn't got a big one now he knows he's got it and all he's got to do is find the way to get it in against Billy Brown well at this stage. Still bleeding, but it's holding up. saw that cut when it opened, first of all in the fourth. Didn't think Redkin would be here at this stage. Oh, Held up well. The end of the sixth, and there's the cut. The blood seeping over that left eye, again being wiped away. Redkin, of course, the man who, funnily enough, never won an amateur title. He represented England against Germany, Ireland, Wales, Scotland, and the United States, and in fact, against the United States. He hammered a gentleman by the name of Sherman Washington to defeat in the third round. That was the famous 10-0 defeat of the Americans in 1961, the same night that 
little man called Billy Walker came on the scene by disposing of the giant Amigan Cornelius Perry. So at the end of the six, Rudkin boxing beautifully, using that left hand well in the at round against Billy Brown, keeping away from him. And Brown has had four fights this year. He's won one, he's drawn one, and he's lost two. Both of those two were in row. Not a man with a knockout punch. He's never knocked anybody out in their 60 fight career. But we come out now for the seventh. So the Rudkin now, in round seventh, against this tough little Filipino, Billy Brown. Fainting with his left and pushing the right in as his first scoring punch. Redkin has noticed that brown weakness. He's open when he comes out of a clinch and he swings wildly there and acknowledges that beautiful left hand boxing of Redkin. He shakes his head, the first flicker of a smile we've seen in these seven rounds so far. This is the first time that Billy Brown has ever seen Alan Redkin, let alone met him in a boxing. He's never seen him on film, he's never seen him in a boxing ring. He tried to see him when he met him fighting a rider for the world title, but his plane was half an hour late, and he arrived about a minute after Ritken had left the ring. but he's really is, as his record shows, a tough little man. Just under half a minute to the seventh and the high in very good shape indeed. Turned around. There's a bell for the end of the seventh. And you notice the Redkin corner by now not quite as worried as about that eye, not half as quickly into the ring as they were in the fourth, fifth, and sixth rounds. It's holding up and Rudkin beginning to show his superior boxing against Billy Brown. His left hand working while well. he's caught Brown in that last round, twice with a left hand which came round. Uh, Rudkin fainted with it first, then brought it in very hard indeed around the corner, and it caught Brown high up on the side of the head, and he caught him once with a very good right hand as well. But Brown still comes forward. Rudkin wondering now what he has to do with this man, because whatever he does to him, he comes forward. There's the man that's coming forward with Al Phillips, the old old gate tiger, in his corner looking after him. Brown absolutely unmarked. Hasn't got a mark on him except a few spatters of Alan Ritkin's blood and still that same poker face. That's that one flicker of a smile when he acknowledged Ritkin's superior left-hand boxing. Round eight. Billy Brown from the Philippines in the light shorts against Alan Ritkin, the British and Empire bantamweight champion. The man who wants a fight with Lionel Rose of Australia, the world champion.
There you can see this contrast in styles. Redkin much more upright, his hands held reasonably high, and Brown crouching all the time, crouching head forward. Hands held at ready. He likes to rush in. He likes to work inside. He's been picked off all the time by that left hand from Redkin, occasionally caught by the really heavy arm. No doubt about it, that Billy Brown would be a problem for any bantamweight in the world. And we're watching in this ring at Manchester live at the Anglo-American Sporting Club. Alan Rincon on the left now, the British boxer surely with the best chance of bringing us a world title. And Redkin has drawn the first blood from Billy Brown. It's from the nose. Red, uh, Brown bleeding now from the nose in this in this round. Just a trickle of blood coming out. desperate in some of his rushes. Not one of Redcombe's better rounds, and is Billy Brown going to be the man who nearly always stays with his opponent until the end, remember? Two fights with a man who's now the world champion, Lionel Rose. He's stopped in ten in the first, but then took Rose to the full distance. And again, of course, this year, Salvatore Baruni, no mean opponent, European champion and former world flyweight champion, took Baruni to a points decision over ten, and just Brown shading it out and losing to Baruni. Just a little trickle of blood coming from his nose in that eighth round against Alan Redkin, but obviously quite prepared to take everything that Redkin has thrown so far. Brown has come here from San Francisco where he's been training, the man who travels all over the world, training and seeing some friends in San Francisco and now hoping to get at least three bouts in this country. As I say, a good performance here against Rudkin, could earn him a fight in London. Round nine. Two rounds to go then in this phantom white fight here at the Anglo-American Sporting Club in the Piccadilly Hotel in Manchester. Alan Rudkin on the right, Billy Brown of the Philippines in the white shorts. There's a the difference. Redkin connects and Brown missed by nearly six inches. Redkin needs now to produce the boxing we saw in the fifth and sixth rounds. Round eight, not one of his better rounds. That's the warning there from Wally Tom for his head.
Around his own corner, caught him with five very good punches. Seeing here at Manchester tonight. There's Redkin, the man with only three knockout victories on his record. He put the first on his record when he knocked out Dickie Hanna in the first fight of his career in two rounds. A couple of fights later, he gave the same treatment to Jerry Jones. That was in June 1962. And then we had to wait to that great punch last year when he put away the American Ron Jones in the second round. The punch of the year, they called it. And tonight he's here against Billy Brown, who's lasted the nine rounds with him so far. And who won the British and Empire titles in 1965 in Nottingham when he beat Johnny Corwell. The referee stopped it in the tenth. There's Billy Brown, the man who, when the match was first made, everybody said, who's Billy Brown of the Philippines? Well, now everybody knows that Billy Brown of the Philippines there with Al Phillips is quite a bantamweight. So the traditional salute for the tenth and the last round here between Alan Rudkin in the dark shorts the British and Empire Bantamweight champion, Billy Brown of the Philippines, the man who's twice met Lionel Rose, the man who's now the world Bantamweight champion. Both these men with ambitions of meeting Rose for the world title in December. Redkin has got over that setback of an eye injury in the fourth. It really looked bad as he boards the end of the fourth. But good corner work on it. And it's held up. Very well indeed. the members of the sporting club here tonight with a great contest this their first anniversary of the anglo-american sporting club in manchester their 10th boxing promotion and what a way it's, it's being celebrated the guests including a number of the manchester united footballers including bobby charlton have really been given a boxing treat on their first anniversary of the club soak up an awful lot of punishment but Redkin's superior boxing skill which he showed in the middle of the fight and again he's showing now in this tenth and last round should pull him through without much trouble 
And there it is. The foul for the end of the set. The final run between Alan Rutkin. And there it up goes. Alan Rutkin's hand. Rutkin beats Billy Brown in the Philippines on points here in Manchester. from the members here around the ringside well deserved a really great bantamweight contest and a pretty impressive performance from the British and Empire champion Alan Redkin still a little concerned about that eye the cut that opened just above the left eye towards the end of the third but held up well and Redkin using his boxing skill used that left hand and took the verdict over this tough little man from Manila Billy Brown of the Philippines the official announcement gentlemen please gentlemen please the referee scores the contest. 47 and a quarter points to Brown. 50 points to Rutkin. Rutkin is the winner. There are the official points. 47 and a quarter to Brown. 50 to Rutkin. A really impressive winning margin. Can so there it is. The winner, Alan Rutkin, the British and Empire Bantamweight champion. On points here at the Anglo-American Sporting Club in Manchester over Billy Brown of the Philippines.